Tonight on CTV News, the man who died in a car crash near Dunsandle is named. A decision to develop Victoria Square is likely to be made this week. And another milestone in the rebuild of this city, the Caltonmore Footbridge, is opened today. Broadcasting across Canterbury, from the CTV studio, this is First at Five. Good evening, welcome to CTV News, now live streaming every night at ctv.co.nz. The man who died in a car crash near Dunsandle uh, last night has been named. He was 20-year-old Finlay William Dunning from Methven. Police say the northbound Toyota Surf appears to have collided with the driver's side of the southbound uh, Sabaru station wagon uh, during was driving. Three men in the Toyota Surf remain in hospital with their injuries still being assessed. Police investigations into the crash on State Highway 1 are continuing. Well, the decision to redevelop Victoria Square is likely to be made this week after Christchurch residents voiced their concerns about the site's future, with most residents saying they don't want the area touched at all, as Jared McCulloch explains. Plans to fix and repair Victoria Square will be discussed this week at the Christchurch City Council, following an outcry from residents wanting the space to remain the same. Very happy that, the, that CCDU have listened to the residents of Christchurch who said that Victoria Square was a special place, and they've acknowledged that by retaining nearly all of the features, they're going to restore the statues, the fountains, etc., and, the, and the layout. They're going to keep the original layout, and that's really, really good. A $7 million revamp was on the cards from the Christchurch Central Development Unit and the Earthquake Minister to redesign the site completely, causing a controversial backlash from the public and heritage supporters. The CCDU released new plans with public consultation going out to Christchurch residents back in July to voice their opinion over the development of the site. It's going to be fantastic and, it's, and they've been given credit that they listen to the Christchurch public and to the residents of what they've said about this place. And you go through the document, they regularly use the word tranquil space, which is what the public was telling them that this is a special place and they have acknowledged that, that it's special. We should also thank the residents of Christchurch for stepping up and speaking up and, and, and telling them what they thought and how, why they thought this is a special place. A plan will be presented to the city councillors on Thursday who will sign off the next stage in the project. It's a general plan, the detailed plans aren't there and they've retained the layout which is really, really good but of course it will be in the details. And that's, that's where we're to see how they resolve those problems and what they propose to do with them. He hopes the restoration plan will deliver a site for all Cantabrians to enjoy but from the draft copy, he still has some questions. One is an ongoing one about the cyclists because they've got this wonderful addition which we approve of the, what they call the Victoria Connection, which with the cyclists coming off Victoria Street straight through. And it's how they divert those cyclists to encourage them to use that one and how wide those pathways will be for the cyclist pedestrians. And there's also the issue of pedestrians and cyclists on the same shared area and how they resolve that. And that's not really clear in the plan. And there are some other features as well. In consultation with Naitahu, they've got what they call a standalone element reflecting it. And it's just in preliminary discussions where they've identified areas where they can have those standalone elements. And that is new and we'd also like to see what they're proposing. And it would be great if the public were consulted and got a chance to see what they're planning to do. And then we wait to see for the Minister signs off and then to release the timetables when work starts and when they hope to have it completed. They're hoping to see the site fixed back to its former glory alongside the Town Hall, with the restoration continuing just next door. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. Another milestone in the rebuild of this city with the opening of the Carlton Mill footbridge. Chelsea Daniels has more. Yet another landmark opening in the city today with the Carlton Mill footbridge. Mayor Leanne Dowzell opened the bridge in front of a group of excited locals and city councillors. Here we have um, an important uh, footbridge and, and cycling bridge. Uh, it connects um, Merivale and, and beyond um, Fendleton uh, with the Hagley Park in the central city. And uh, of course it's a very um, well used track. Uh, I myself used to just live down the road and, and would cycle across it on a daily basis um, out to university but also um, into town and across to the hospital where I used to work. So um, it's just great to see it reopened. It's suffered irreparable damages in the Canterbury earthquakes. The work on the rebuild started in May this year and has run on time and on budget. There was a reasonable development phase uh, in terms of the, the design. There was some community feedback had to be taken into account so uh, 
Um, once we had the design finalised, though, the construction team were able to get on with it fairly quickly. It took them about five months um, to construct the bridge. Pedestrians and cyclists alike were in attendance today, with the footbridge marking another way forward for the hopes of a cycle-friendly city. The rebuild had close involvement with the community, particularly in the design aspect. I think that you know when the original designs were done, uh, the community came together and said, "No, this isn't right for this part of uh, the river. Uh, it, it, it closes off the river. It doesn't open it up." And and so we've ended up with a, a design that actually works for people. And uh, the community input really has been the strength of this project. And Skirts Campbell um, agrees. The initial design, I think, didn't quite give the visibility um, that people were looking for in terms of being able to. Look over the, the water as they, they cross the bridge and so on and so forth. So um, we got some feedback from the residents um, and uh, the revised design as you see it was, uh, was come up with. Skirt has been an integral part of the Christchurch rebuild with their work spanning over 600 different projects. Scoop was built for Christchurch, you know, to fix, fix the horizontal infrastructure in Christchurch, or at least get it to the point where the normal processes that the council have uh, can take over. Campbell says Skirt's involvement in the rebuild will run on time, with hopes to finish up next year. Our part of the, the horizontal infrastructure rebuild program will, will, will come to an end in end next year. We're targeting completing our work uh, by the end of 2016. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. Very good. Still to come here on CTV News, get ready to be amazed at the Mirror Magic exhibition at the Christchurch Museum. Welcome back to CTV News live streaming at ctv.co.nz. Well, get ready to see yourself in a different light with the Mirror Magic exhibition at the Christchurch Museum on right now. Chelsea Daniels has more. A new exhibition at the Christchurch Museum allows you to explore the magic of mirrors. This room is uh, an exhibition called Mirror Magic and in here there is, uh, I think, 21 different exhibits all around mirrors and what mirrors can do, which is more than just reflecting your image. The Mirror Magic exhibition allows visitors to experiment and explore the mysterious world of mirrors. Most people will know mirrors as you, you stand in front of them and, and look and see how, how tidy you are. Um, but mirrors are really interesting about uh, how, they, how they reflect light and uh, the, all the refractions and stuff. Some you can use mirrors to create holograms um, by putting two certain shaped mirrors together. Hennig is in charge of an education program set up to teach children the wonder of what mirrors can do. We do an education program around this, um, which takes somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half, um, and the students will experience all of these fantastic exhibits and learn um, what mirrors can do. And how have the kids been reacting to seeing themselves like they've never seen themselves before? Oh, they love it. Um, there's one uh, that they, they really like is, is a mirror about um, angles. So if you have a, a mirror at 180 degrees you can see two images of yourself if you have it about 30 degrees you can see about eight images of yourself and kids love looking at a whole of themselves it's uh, fantastic um, and the other one would be the one where you change your shape from having big long tall skinny legs to being short and bad and yeah they, 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 they are absolutely enjoying it wild by what mirrors can do. The exhibition is touring the country, teaching children and adults alike with a hands-on experience like no other. This exhibition was designed by Tamanua, the uh, Museum of Art, Science and History up in uh, New Plymouth um, and it's a, a travelling touring exhibition. The Mirror Magic exhibition is open until November 8th. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. Well, Canterbury felt a wintry blast over the weekend, but it's not all bad news for those ski fields. Yes, many ski fields across the region enjoyed light snowfalls. We didn't really get as much snow as was predicted. So uh, we got probably 20 centimetres over the Friday, Saturday, Sunday period. Where it was a bit less than what we thought we were going to have, the weather predicted for us. But uh, it freshened things up a little bit. And most of those ski fields across the Canterbury region hope to make the most of the snow with the school holidays just around the corner. Well, a well-known Christchurch writer is taking his new project to the shelves with the release of his first book kicking off this week. Jared McCulloch caught up with the man behind King Rich. 
He's about to complete one of his life goals. I don't think I could have gone to my grave without having at least tried to write um, a successful novel, and, and this is my first effort. Whether it's successful or not is up to readers, not to writers. Award-winning writer and columnist Joe Bennett is getting set to launch his first ever novel this week at Annington Event Centre as part of the Word Festival. The book, King Rich, is set in post quake Christchurch, following the lives of those affected by the Canterbury disaster. It was shortly after the deadly shake, Bennett had a conversation with a man at a Littleton pub, sparking the idea for his novel. And he told me that they had detected someone in the Grand Chancellor Hotel inside the Red Zone that they'd detected them with thermal imaging in this deserted, ruined hotel on a very dangerous lean. And I wrote a column about it at the time, which I really liked. Really, and I was always pleased with that column, and it got quite a reaction. And um, as, as a sort of image of a broken city and one guy, you know, and so on. Um, but the, the notion has stayed with me. But his latest achievement wasn't easy. Like some books, it came with its twists and turns. And I was about 30,000 words in, which is about well, a bit more than a third of the novel. And... I knew where it was going, but I'd, I suffered a crisis of confidence. I didn't, I didn't think it was worth completing. He sent in his work, the publisher and his agent liked what they saw. Which was very heartening, um, and it still feels a bit presumptuous to me. But those people who've read it so far, um, touch wood, and there's plenty of it here, um, have very much enjoyed it and I'm optimistic that it'll go down well. The book delves into the impact immediately after the February quake, reflecting the thoughts of many throughout the region at that time. It threw them back on their on their base metal, on their base resources, who they really are. You know, you find out what matters to you when your house has fallen down and you can't find your wife and children or whatever. You find out what matters to you most importantly. But it's only the start of his novel career, looking at writing a second, a completely different story. This one has, has finished and people like it so far has given me, yeah, the confidence to risk stepping out into the, you know, diving back into the deep end of the pool and, and having a, trying another stroke. The book launches this Thursday night at 7.30 at Ennington Event Centre. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. Well, Les, of course, you've been living under a rock. You'll know New Zealand's first Rugby World Cup game kicked off in the early hours of this morning for those brave enough to get, to get up that early. Of course, the All Blacks won. How could you not know that? But did Canab Cantabrians Get alongside the men in black, Chelsea Daniels got the public's reaction. Did you get up this morning to watch rugby? I did. You did? No, I listened on the radio, but my husband got up to watch. I don't really care, but I heard the news on the radio when I woke up. Well, I got up this morning to watch it. I've just watched it at the dinner hour. No. <laughs> That was like a yes, no. Not as good as yesterday's match against Japan, though. That was better. I will. Maybe. Yeah, I will watch the finals, yeah. No, I'm not really interested in rugby. Do you reckon you'll be getting up early um, for some other games, maybe? Uh, some, probably closer to the end. Oh, probably when they get to the bigger games. But I was really chuffed to see Japan get up and win that game against um, uh, South Africa. I oh, enjoy rugby. I'm actually going over to the World Cup in a couple of weeks. Now, if it was golf... Another matter altogether. Nothing wrong with delayed coverage, that's for sure. Well, a Christchurch man has been named as this year's New Zealand Defence Force Reservist of the Year. Lance Corporal Nicholas Hill faced off against eight other reservists at the Trentham Military Camp. The third-year nursing student won the title during the day competition on Saturday, including for physical resilience testing, weapon handling and marksmanship and finishing with a speech at a formal dinner. Well, still to come here on CTV News, your local sports updates and the region's weather. Welcome back to CTV News. Now here's Gordon Finlater with the local sports. Well, while Sunday offered upsets galore at the Rugby World Cup, it was business as usual for Canterbury in their ITM Cup campaign. The Cantabs didn't let a repeat of last season's shock loss to North Harbour happen, grabbing a scrappy win on the road in what was a low-scoring affair. Canterbury were the first on the board. Rob Thompson putting the ball in behind the Harbour defence for a pacey Johnny McNichol to get on the end of 20 minutes in. 
Canterbury's second and final try of the afternoon came just five minutes before the break. A line out on the North Harbour five metre line had the red and black Fords licking their lips. And while the rolling mull couldn't make its way to the line, Ben Fennell was there to get the job done on a quick pick and go. Canterbury will be glad they took a 14 point advantage to the break, with Harbour giving themselves a sniff late in the game. The hosts got within a converted try with just over five minutes remaining. Tavita Lee was the try scorer, working his way through the Canterbury defence. The visitors would go on to show their class though, holding on to make it six from six in this year's competition. Canterbury now face the tough task of a quick turnaround before they take on Waikato at AMI Stadium this Wednesday. Walter Rugby League now and the Canterbury Bulls kept their unbeaten run in the National Premiership alive with a comfortable win over the Central Vipers. The defending champs ran in 12 tries at AMI Stadium, with Matt Sauni and Tevin Arona both grabbing hat-tricks. The Bulls now have the chance to all but book their spot in this year's finals when they travel to Wellington this weekend. While well, tennis now and the Christchurch Interclub competition was in full swing over the weekend. To celebrate the start of the club season, all of Saturday's matches were played at Wilding Park's indoor centre. I went down to see how the local competition is gearing up. Canterbury Tennis couldn't have picked a better day to move the club competition to the indoor centre at Wilding Park, with the weekend's wintry conditions having no effect on a great day of tennis. With participation levels at the best in recent years, it's a promising sign for tennis in Canterbury. Pre-earthquake we had 88 senior inter-club teams playing in a range of competitions. This year we've had 119, so that's a 40% increase in playing numbers in competitive grades. So that's fantastic. Um, we've listened to our customers and put up some different changes in grades and, and made some rule adaptions. And it's been really positively accepted by the clubs out there. One Christchurch club experiencing success in recent years has has been Kashmir. Their senior men's team will be going for a three-peat this summer. The club also took home the top award at the New Zealand Tennis Awards recently, being named New Zealand Club of the Year. Team captain Matt Meredith puts the success of the club down to its family-friendly environment. We've got some people that put in some really long hours, um, you know, from the, the coaching staff through to the president, junior administrators. Um, but it just the club gels well together. Um, the juniors mix in with the seniors, and it's, we're not split into two clubs. Uh, it's a, definitely a friendly family atmosphere. I think that's changed a lot in the last few years too, uh, especially with a lot of our team. Like we all now have children and kids, and so you see like all the young ones running around. I think in the past, you know, tennis clubs on a Saturday afternoon where you know adults going down and you know sometimes leaving the kids at home so now it's a yeah, really friendly family club and uh, I think that's made a huge difference. While many players in the interclub competition have already seen their best playing days their experience on and off the court is something that rubs off onto the many young players looking to take their game to the next level. It's really important that those 14, 15 year olds who are good enough get a chance to play against people who have racked up 100 inter-club wins, the likes of Glenn Wilson and Remy Fenion and all those, those really top players and it's excellent for the juniors. One of those young players is Michael Matson. She knows how valuable taking on experienced opposition is for development. Playing these older players is always a super good experience because they're, they're smarter. So when you come out as a youngster and you're like, oh, they're old, I'm just going to whack, whack the ball and see what happens, they're not going to get to it. But they're always really smart. Sally Moorfield went to Wimbledon, obviously. She's a really smart player. Jolene also. So it's always a really good experience for us young kids to see these smart women kind of outdoing us and showing us how the game of tennis really is. Earlier in the year, Matson and her sister Holly took out the National 16s doubles title. With a former Crusader and current assistant coach Tabai Matson as their father, it's a wonder they weren't pushed onto the rugby field. <laughs> no, mum kind of uh, ruled that out straight away. She didn't want girls on the rugby field getting injured, so... 
he takes it really well. He's a really good supporter, but he's not used to the whole tennis atmosphere as a quiet atmosphere. If we hit a good shot, he goes mental, like, yeah, as if it was kind of like a try. But he's, he's a really good supporter. We love him to bits, so yeah. The interclub competition will run on Saturdays over the coming months, with this year's champions being crowned before Christmas. And finally tonight, there was no luck for the Canterbury Cats at the National Hockey Finals in Whangarei. After the men were dumped out in round-robin play, the Cats were left to fly the flag for Canterbury on Saturday, but fell to host Northland four goals to two in the semi-final. The round-robin leaders were then left empty-handed in the bronze medal match going down to Midlands by seven goals to four. The eventual winners were Auckland in the women's competition, while Capital took home the men's title. You're up to date with the latest in local sport. I'm Gordon Findlater for CTV Sport. Time now for your region's weather forecast. to Canterbury. Well, the weekend we saw quite a wintry outbreak with snow settling for some places. Today was cold as well with showers coming through and cloudy skies. Today's highs and 10 degrees there for Timaru and 8 degrees for you Twizel. A cold one for central Canterbury as well. Christchurch you had 11 degrees as your high today. But cooler there for Akaroa, Leeson, Darfield and Ashburton all on 8 degrees and Methven you took out 7. 7 degrees was also shared by Kaikoura, Colverden, Rangiora and Oxford. Eight degrees there for Cheviot and Amberley and Hammer Springs just on six degrees today. Over to the Alpine region, nine degrees for you Arthur's Pass and six for Lake Tikapo. Now tomorrow is looking quite bleak and dreary for the major centres and everywhere across the board. South easterly winds for you Timaru with cloudy skies, a little bit of drizzle there and nine degrees for your high. Ashburton get your raincoats handy as well as it could be a little bit soggy for your Tuesday. Nine degrees for your expected high with easterly winds pushing through. You may also see some easterly winds and some showers, Christchurch. Nine degrees for your high and your morning start for there. Kai Kaura, a wet one in store for you too. Eight degrees for you, a little bit cooler than everyone else. And you could also be seeing a little bit of snow to the 700 metre mark. Now rain and cloudy skies for the rest of the Canterbury region. Easterly winds and rain there for Tamuka and Geraldine with cloudy skies. Central Canterbury could be quite heavy and persistent rain for you, Darfield, Leeson and Methven. Akaro, a few scattered showers there throughout the day and 9 degrees for your high along with Leeston. Heading further north, that rain just continues. Unfortunately, that's spring weather. While those cloudy skies are there for most places, 8 degrees there at Fort Cheviot, Colverton and Rangiora. And over to the Alpine region, surprisingly, you are the driest, finest place to be with 9 degrees for everyone's highs tomorrow. Now the upcoming days, Wednesday is also looking quite bleak and dreary. We could be seeing some heavy showers, particularly for North Canterbury and low temperatures. Thursday is also looking a little bit bad. We're seeing those cloudy skies. However, Timaru could be a few sunshine breaks there for you. Everywhere else, easterly winds with drizzle patches throughout the day. On Wednesday, the rest of the Canterbury region can also expect these easterly winds with heavy rainfalls, particularly further north, as I said before. Alpine passes, you are going to see some sun, though. Flipping over to Thursday, sunny breaks, especially for South Canterbury. But as we move further north, that rain is definitely out and about with easterly winds there. So the next coming days we are expecting it to be quite wintry, cold with cloudy skies and rain there. Hopefully that warm spring weather comes back and surprises us with a few nice days coming very soon. And that's your weather update for Monday. Thanks Mercy and that is CTV News for your Monday. Have a good evening. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.